the fifth book of Torah, which we are just beginning, with the parasha of Devarim, is radically different from the other four books. Of course, we refer to the entire Torah as the word of God, primarily because most of the dialogue, most of the, of the, of the text in the Torah is God spoke to Abraham, God spoke to Isaac, God spoke to Yaakov, God spoke to Moshe, which covers about three books. So it's the word of God spoken to Moshe. But the fifth book of Torah is all in Moshe's voice. It's not God said to Moshe. Moshe said to the children of Israel, the entire book. What is Moshe saying to the children of Israel? Well, he's reviewing the 40 years in the desert, the good news and the bad. He's also chastising them for all the times that they challenged God or tested God. And he also reviews or repeats certain commandments that God gave during the 40 years in the desert, which were already recorded in the earlier books. So it's a review of the historical events, and it's a review of selected commandments that Moshe felt he had to review and share with the people before they enter the promised land. So it would be correct to say that the fifth book of the Torah is Moshe's farewell and instruction for the future. What do you need to know when you enter the promised land? What part of the experience of the, of the 40 years in the desert can you take with you that will be helpful? How has this prepared you for life in Israel. Now, the major transition is not only geographic, and it's not only the conditions of life. Uh, life in a desert is certainly different than a life in a country. Um, a country very different from Egypt. Egypt has no rain. All of its produce comes from the Nile overflowing at a certain time of the year and watering all the fields so that they produce the crops. Israel gets its crops from rain, from, from heaven. But besides these differences, there was also a huge spiritual difference, change. In the desert, the Jews were living a completely metaphysical life. They didn't work, they didn't cook, they didn't clean, they didn't uh, sell, they didn't barter. They had everything they needed, either came from a rock that gave water or from the manna that fell from heaven every day to your doorway, enough for that day. Your garments never got old. Your shoes never wore out. So what did they do all day? For 40 years. They studied the Torah with Moshe. A pretty ideal situation. But then God says, no, you have to go into the land. And to do that, you need an army, which means you need to become soldiers. And when you, when you settle in the land, you'll need to become farmers and do business. In other words, the, the honeymoon is over. The mystical, magical life of the 40 days in the desert, that's over. Now you have to go and settle the land. 
that means become earthy. Not to the exclusion of everything spiritual, but certainly a more earthy life. So why would the fourth book, the fifth book of the Torah be written in Moshe's voice? How is that more appropriate for entering the land? Entering the land meant now that you know godliness, bring God into the world, into the earthy world, the kind of world that all nations live in. Everyone is a farmer. Everyone does business. Everyone engages in physical activity. So now the God that you got to know during the honeymoon in the desert, bring that God down to earth in all the earthy ways that human beings uh, live by. What does it mean to bring God down to earth? Well, of course, the first step is to get to know him. If you can't even know him, you have no access. There's, not, there's nothing else you can do. So the first step was get to know God. And so the 40 years in the desert were not a waste of time. God forbid. It wasn't merely a punishment for not wanting to go into Israel at the first opportunity. It was a necessary developmental stage where average people, not prophets, not patriarchs, average people got to know God by studying under Moshe, who was really a great teacher because he was an expert on the subject. So going into Israel, bringing God down to earth includes Moshe being able to speak in his own voice and godliness comes through. When God had to speak himself and Moshe could only quote God, then God has not yet come down to the human level. And at best, the human being can hear and parrot back what God said, which is awesome. But that's not down to earth. The fifth book of Torah, every word of it is the word of God. And yet, it doesn't need the attribution. We can stop saying, this is what God said at Mount Sinai, or at this other location, or on the occasion of, of the splitting of the sea, or whatever it was. We don't have to attribute godliness to God. We got it. We understand it. We can recognize godliness without having to be told, this is the word of God. So when Moshe spoke, he is speaking the word of God, but without, without notifying. There's a comedian who does, uh, he impersonates other, other actors and other, but before he does his impersonation, he tells you who he's going to impersonate. He says, just in case you don't recognize who I'm impersonating. So Moshe says, I don't need to tell you who I'm quoting. We're past that stage. Now, when I tell you, you know it's God, even though I'm using my human voice. That was, that was kind of the bridge between people living a miraculous spiritual life in the desert and people going into the land and becoming farmers and builders and lawyers and doctors and the link is Moshe. He's always been the link. So when Moshe can speak in his own voice, and as the sages say, 
God spoke through Moshe's throat, meaning Moshe didn't have to attribute. He didn't have to say, I'm telling, here's what God said. He could speak in his own voice, his own throat, and we knew godliness when we heard it. That was the first breakthrough in connecting heaven and earth. Since then, we've had many prophets, we've had many judges, we've had many sages. And most recently, we have Rebbes. All of them speak the words of God, but some of them need to use their their godly credentials, and some can just speak in their own voice, and godliness communicates to the world. That is the fifth book of the Torah. Now we need to understand why did Moshe choose the, um, the criticisms that he chose? Why did he choose to repeat the commandments that he selected out? And how was that helpful to establishing a godly life in the earthy manner of running a country and living in civilization, dealing with other nations, diplomatic relationships, these treaties, what is it that we can take from the 40 years in the desert that prepared us for life in the land? More about that in coming weeks. We have a Sunday night program for VIPs that you might be interested in. It's informal, it's questions and answers, it's conversation. It's really relaxed, it's really pleasant, enjoyable, informative, and uh, kind of community-like. It's a Sunday night program, there's a um, Wednesday morning program for the VIPs, and there's a Wednesday night program. All of it, just conversation, casual, laid-back, unscripted. So join us, take a look, click uh, the link below, and see which, which of the three suits you best, and join us for some enjoyable conversation.